And this breaking news, prosecutors in the Rebecca Grossman trial are holding their own press conference. Let's listen in. So uh, the maximum is uh, four plus 30 to life. Um, the way that works is the two murder counts uh, are each 15 to life. Um, the judge has the ability to, uh, to run them together or separately. So it, uh, the maximum would be 15 plus 15 or 30 to life. Um, when you do uh, determinate sentencing versus indeterminate, and now I'm getting to legal speak now, but ostensibly the till life is considered the indeterminate then you do the determinant, so the remaining charge of uh, leaving the scene, causing death, that has a maximum of four years attached to it. So you would, the maximum she could get would be those four years plus the 30 to life. So and what's um, the minimum? The minimum, I think, would be ostensibly doing the two murders together. So it would be 15 to life plus the low term on the leaving the scene, which I don't know off the top of my head, but I want to say it's either 16 months or two years. Scott Erickson was the big elephant in the room throughout this entire trial, um, and, and nobody brought him to the stand. Can you kind of speak to that and address that at this point? Uh, both sides have the subpoena power uh, and can bring whoever they feel they, they want to prove their case or in the defense to defend their case. Um, and uh, just the way it worked out, neither side decided that that was going to, to work for them or help them. I mean, given everything that they were saying, the defense was saying, the allegations that they were making, you didn't feel it was necessary to bring you on? We thought the evidence uh, spoke for itself. As we argued in closing, there was not a shred of evidence that he was involved. And uh, the, the jury obviously felt that way too. Uh, he got judicial diversion. Um, that was where, uh, on misdemeanors, with the with the way the law is now, on misdemeanors you can ask for the judge to give you diversion. Um, he satisfied the conditions of his diversion, and the, at that point, um, when you do that, the case is dismissed. And it was a misdemeanor, reckless driving case. Yes. yes. Can um, Can you talk about there was? Um something brought up with the judge today about um, some sort of evidence that was sealed being given to a reporter. Can you speak about what happened? Yes, so there was uh, a protective order issued in this case as to the discovery, the evidence. Um, there had been uh, a video that had been posted online and based on that we sought a protective order to prevent continued uh, evidence going online. You want a jury who doesn't know the evidence, they want them to only hear the evidence that is presented in court. Uh, so based on that, the judge did grant our request for a protective order on the discovery. Um, it came to our attention uh, that last night, uh, 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 through a news report that we saw on, on, online, and uh, it appeared that Ms. Grossman had contacted that reporter, got it a, gotten a business card, and shortly thereafter, an email was sent to the reporter uh, that had um, basically, in, I guess, her mind what uh, why she was not guilty and listed things that were not, in her mind, uh, shown to the, the jury. Uh, as part of that e email, we, uh, the reporter said there was videos attached, which means discovery. Um, and so based on that, um, we asked the court to uh, revoke her bail and uh, remand her for, um, in, we were arguing jury tampering as well as violating the, the protective order. Were you pretty confident that it was her or somebody associated with her that sent that email? Yes, the, the, the timing is just extremely suspect, um, as well as no one else, because of the protective order, should have access to discovery besides the attorneys or the, the defendant. The defendant gets access to their discovery, um, so by a process of elimination. But no action was taken by the judge? No action was taken no, by the judge. That was the reason she was put in cuffs? No, no, no. no, no. She was. Can, can okay. we just go back to the top? Speak about after more than three years, what this verdict today means, just so we. Uh, I mean, it's it, it's. This is our job. This is what we do. It's this is a day for the Iskanders and for Mark and Jacob. 
really that's it's for and for the community of Westlake Village um, we go to this is our job it's just like you guys come here for your job and we you know we don't do this for anybody we do it for justice and justice was served you know this was like a what almost a four week trial as far as testimony was concerned and whatnot were you at all either of you surprised at how quickly this verdict came in? I don't know about surprise um, it it was the defense was kind of a uh, you know either it was either you believed it or you didn't and so when you kind of go on those um, those very big kind of dichotomies either you know she's guilty of everything or she's guilty of nothing that tends to be either you kind of believe it or you don't which tends to speed up the process um, when you start getting into more technical arguments that's when you maybe get some of the longer deliberations but it's you know either you believe you believe it or you don't were you surprised that the only readback they asked for was from witnesses during the first two days and none of the experts? Uh, not especially surprised. Uh, I think that we spoke to the strength of the eyewitness testimony in this case, uh, and I think the jurors' questions reflected that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Ryan, are you good? Are you good? All right, those were the prosecutors on the Rebecca, Rebecca Grossman trial. Deputy DA Ryan Gold with L.A. County saying today that justice was served and this is a day for Mark and Jacob and the Iskanders and the community. Um, speaking about the two boys who were killed by, uh, by Rebecca Grossman who was found guilty today on all four counts.